The evolution of practice management continues with Amicus Attorney 2010 Premium Edition and File Intake Enhancements. When we released Amicus Attorney 2009 Premium Edition, we did so with enhanced file intake capabilities. If you remember, these changes allowed you to have a Next button to ask for additional information based on the file type most likely when you created a new file. Well, in Premium Edition 2010, we've gone even further. You're still going to create your new files the same way, by providing a short file name, a client most likely, and then based on the file type, the Next button may appear to ask you additional questions that are specific to new files for that file type. So let's go ahead and create a new civil litigation file. We'll call it the Barrett litigation, and we'll assign it to the current prospect, David Barrett, who's going to become the primary client. The Next button down at the bottom exists because the file type Civil Litigation has additional intake requirements involved with it, and this is the same as it was in 2009. We simply fill in the details that we have, especially the required ones, and then click Save and Open to proceed. See, normally, after you've filled in all of the regular details on your file intake, you have an open file that's ready to be worked on. But in this case, specific to this file type perhaps, we've also required that a conflict check be performed. We also require that the limitation period be set and a precedent series of events and reminders be applied to the default responsible lawyer. Generating a document needs to be done, we need a retainer agreement, and optionally, sending an email to the client. And this is all happening because of the additional file intake enhancements that were made in 2010. We can't proceed with this file intake until we perform at least the required fields, which you notice are denoted with a red asterisk. This gives you and your firm more control over the file intake process and makes sure that nothing important slips through the cracks. So let's proceed with this file intake and run our conflict check. One click automatically fills in the client's name and fills in the advanced search fields that are required for our basic conflict search. We'll go ahead and check and make sure that we have no conflicts with David, which we don't. So we can close from there and move on to the next thing. Now notice that the asterisk changes to a gray color. We've already performed that operation, but the close button is still grayed out. We still have to apply our precedent, generate our document, before we can proceed with the file. Applying the precedent, of course, is going to set a limitation reminder. Heather Gavel's currently the responsible lawyer, but if she's not going to be the person involved with this file, we'll assign it to somebody else, say Perry Mason. And now Perry Mason's going to be the one that gets reminded about the limitation period expiring. So we'll set this out to January 27th, 2011. Click OK, and immediately all of the calendar events are set in relation to the limitation reminders precedent. Generating a document's important, so let's go ahead and do that. The document gets generated based on a document merge template, and all we have to do is change some of the details in the boilerplate language, perhaps, before saving it back to the file as a completed document that's been issued to the client. Back on the file intake, we now have a close button available because we perform the required steps. But we might want to send a quick email off to the client using a template again, just thanking them for retaining the firm. Clicking on send email will do that. After a quick mail merge, the email is immediately in the outbox ready to be sent to the client. And now we'll close the box. And don't forget about that precedent we applied, stating that it was out in January 2011. Let's have a look at the events on the file. If we go to the file events, Perry Mason now has four limitation period reminders in his to-do list already set. Now I think everybody who's ever been involved in file intake in a law firm knows how valuable these enhancements can be. But now that I've shown you how it works, I want to show you how to set it up because that's something that's surprisingly easy to do. We're just going to pop over to the office and assuming that we're an administrator, which we are, we'll simply go into the new file intake management. Once we're in here, all we have to do is decide whether we want the intake to be different for all files or just for individual files of certain types. So in my case, I've done all files, which is the easiest thing to do. Click on View Action Items on the right-hand side, click on the Edit button, and decide what you want included as part of the file intake and whether or not these items should be required. So if limitation reminders should be required, but generating a document shouldn't, check 1, 
deselect the other, and click Save when you're done. It's as simple as that. One final OK, and it's changed the file intake for all new files from this point forward. As with everything in Amicus, this new feature is designed to be easy to use, easy for you to implement, yet powerful enough to allow you to get the most out of your practice management system. Thank you for watching. To find out more or for a personalized demo, please visit www.amicusattorney.com or call 1-800-472-2289.